Yellowtail Kingfish, Snapper, and the infamous Bronze Whaler Shark. Hello and welcome back to the ocean my friend. It is great to see you here. In this episode, we are on board Hyperlon Blue, joined by my dad. Turuturu Martangi Island is today's destination. It doesn't take long for the first kingfish to find us, giving us some company during our descent. Kingfish are very curious animals, often approaching divers and sticking around to see what they're doing. But as many spear fishermen know, this is often the downfall of the kingfish. This spot was going off and it was incredible to see, absolutely stacked with life, all the way from the bottom to the top, whole water column full of fish. Kingfish, goatfish, snapper, all swimming around together. It's a privilege to be able to spend some time <laughs> under the ocean witnessing all these cool and amazing things. But we hadn't seen anything yet. What we were about to witness was absolutely breathtaking. The ocean is a place of endless opportunities and endless possibilities. Beyond what you can see, there could be anything you never really know. From the murky depths of the Haraki Gulf, a huge school of kingfish starts to materialise in front of me. I'm absolutely awestruck. How can there be so many fish? A hypnotic blizzard of green and gold scales mesmerises and excites all who see it. I haven't seen numbers of kingfish like this very often, but I don't think it's a sight I could ever get tired of seeing. I'm taking it all in, and I mean no harm. But the spear fisherman inside of me can't help but look through the school in search of the big ones. The spear fisherman inside of me can't help but wonder what it would have been like if I had a spear gun with me. I'm going to be jumping in again to shoot some fish later, but for now, these ones are safe. What goes through the mind of a fish, we will never really know. But I'm sure we must look pretty funny to them. What are all the tubes for? Where are the bubbles coming from? Why are you so slow and clumsy underwater? Humans certainly are strange creatures, and in the ocean we look very out of place, but I am often amazed by the hospitality and friendliness that the ocean provides us. So many beautiful fish, friendly and willing to interact with you, if you come in with a clear conscience and good intentions. The kingfish school visited, stuck around for a bit, and then left just as quickly as they came. Thank you for passing by kingfish, it was an absolute pleasure. Negligence and incompetence on the part of humans has led to many of the ocean's greatest woes. Here is a fishing rod that has made it down to the bottom of the ocean. It sucks for whoever lost it, but it's hard to feel sympathy when this item has essentially ended up polluting the ocean. Line fishing is a major contributor to ocean pollution. If you go diving, have a look around popular rocks and that, you're bound to find fishing equipment, lures, lines, all tangled up in the rocks. It's not hard to find if you start looking for it. Pollution in the oceans breaks down the entire ecosystem. Let's work together to clean the ocean up piece by piece, bit by bit. Let's work together to make it a better place. Let's do it for all the amazing animals that call this place home. They don't have a choice, they don't get to leave the ocean. When the water is warmed up and it's full of plastic particles, the fish don't have a choice but to stay or die. They don't get to hop on a plane and go somewhere else. This is their home, this is where they live. And we are destroying it. We can come and go as we please, but they don't have the same luxury. They're stuck here. So let's not fuck it up for them. Most fish don't live that long. The ocean has always been this way as far as they're concerned. But if you talk to any salty sea dogs that have been diving a long time, they will tell you adamantly that the ocean's are in a terrible state right now. The writing is on the wall. We don't need any more scientific papers or anecdotal evidence to tell us that the ocean is dying. The ocean is dying and we know it. But we need to change that. We can't just acknowledge the fact and forget about it like we have been. Let's get our act together and save this place before it's too late and gone forever. I want to live in a future where we get to look back at the current years and say, oceans were doing terribly. But we changed things and they're doing better now. The oceans have recovered and are once again the abundant home to creatures of all walks of life. I want to be able to go diving with my kids and say, back in my day, when I was your age and I started diving, there were never this many fish. Let's be the generation that saves the oceans. Those who have come before us have mismanaged the resource. It is not the endless source of money and power that they thought it was and it's running out. I love eating seafood. Fish in particular. My preferred method of catching fish is spearfishing. 
minimal bycatch, minimal loss of gear, minimal pain and suffering to the fish. What was that? When done correctly. I swim up current to the front end of the marker buoy to see if there are any fish around. On the surface there's some small kingfish. This is a really popular spot, known for bronze whaler sharks among other things. The kingfish seem to know what's up, and now that I have a spare gun in hand they're a lot more wary of me. This is my first time diving Terry Terry Martangi, but there's a few things I've heard. In particular, kingfish, snapper, and bronze whaler sharks aggressive bronze whaler sharks. From the surface I see a silhouette circling below me, so I decide to take a dive, have a look, and try and get some footage of the bronzy. This is not typical behaviour for these sharks, coming up to meet me. Generally they're going to spook off and stay far away from you, unless you give them a good reason to come in, such as shooting a fish or making a panic on the surface. Bronze whaler sharks are generally very shy and timid until provoked. I hadn't done anything that I think would have set off the shark, but it was already acting quite aggressive towards me. Following me up to the surface, I can see it hasn't gone back down to the bottom. The boat isn't far away, but it's up current and it's running strong. At minimum, it's going to take me at least a couple minutes to get there. Seeing a shark doesn't necessarily mean that you're in immediate danger. However, I've seen enough bronze whaler sharks to know that this one is different. This one is about it, this bronzy wants the smoke. Sharks most of the time are actually pretty chill, but make no mistake, these things are predators, and they can do some serious damage when they want to. Eventually I lost sight of the shark, but I know he's probably around, he's probably not too far off. If I end up shooting anything, he's going to be right there, wanting some of it. School of kingfish just under here. It's likely that this shark has seen spare fishermen before. Knows what they do, knows what I am, knows what I'm doing, and knows what I'm trying to do. So, he's just putting himself in a good place, waiting for the opportunity. Sharks are opportunistic creatures. If you shoot a fish, wound it, it's flopping around in the your spare, that's an easy meal for the shark. All he's got to do is scare you off. I'm swimming back up current to the infamous marker boy. This time I'm going to be holding on to it. Holding on to the down current side, facing myself down current and seeing if any fish approach. I'm holding on tight with my left hand, trying to resist the current and my positive buoyancy at this depth, while looking around, scanning, keeping an eye out for that shark and anything I might want to shoot. A school of rat kingfish approach. From the left hand side of the school, a beautiful big coherent approaches. I start lining up on the fish. I know I need at least a decent shot to have any chance of getting this past the shark. Alright, that looks good enough to me. Now let's GTFO before we get taxed. The boat is close and it's down current. This is not a coincidence. I know I can make it there in a couple seconds. And that might just be all the time the shark needs to get my fish. I keep ducking my head above and below the surface. Trying to spot the shark and trying to make sure I'm going in the right direction. And there he is. That certainly didn't take long. I hesitate before jumping on the boat. I do really like spending time with these animals. But when he started rushing my fish, I was out of there. Now I'm racing to pull my cohero in before the shark gets to it. This is where the shot comes into play. So you can haul that fish up and not have to worry about the shaft coming out. It's not an amazing shot, but hey, it held. And an amazing fish. So I was holding on to that thing. I like waiting for them, like kings or whatever to come through, just holding on. We saw this big koi, so I shot it. And then like right on cue, shark starts coming up. I'm sure he's scared off a few guys over the years as well. It's a massive Kahiri though, it's probably like the biggest one I've shot. The Kahiri? Yeah. Fucking hell, this one's beautiful. Try actually cast it out in front a little bit. Because they're sitting like right underneath the boat. The snapper took a lot of interest in us this day, following us around most of the time. Acting very shy compared to the kingfish however, typical behaviour for the snapper, preferring instead to hang out on the edge of your vision. I can see them all swimming over. My dad casts out a pilchard, attached to one of the metal jigs that we had found earlier. The snappers rise from the depths, and immediately start converging on the bait. Before any of the fish can make it to the prized bait, a bird swoops down in the corner of my vision and makes a bit. Defeated, it returns to the surface empty-handed, 
and the snappers begin their feeding frenzy. The bait is mobile for a short time, with individual snappers making a run before it is completely overwhelmed. The snappers look very hungry, starving some might say, and that's not too far from the truth. I watched a news article just the other day about how the snapper in the Haraki Gulf are malnourished. With increasing regularity, snapper are being reported to have mushy, discoloured and milky, poor tasting fillets, seeming to be a direct result of malnutrition. The diving at Turi Turi Matangi Island certainly lives up to what I've been told about. I hope to get back to Turi Turi Matangi one day, but until then I can carry all the experiences, all the memories and all the lessons that I've learned while I'm here with me forever. Thank you for watching, I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to come diving again sometime. This video's sustainability message is measure your success based off enjoyment and other more meaningful factors than how many fish you've caught.